Hey, it's Mike Chen, and it's another frigid day here in Seoul. And today I figure we kind of go off the beaten path a little bit. Usually when people want to go get street food, they go to Myeongdong or maybe Hyundai or one of the traditional markets. But today we're in the epicenter of cheap street food, Noryangjin. And it's cheap because there's a lot of universities around here, schools, so there's tons of students and they're cramming for classes all the time. So they want something cheap and they want something quick. So this area is just full of delicious eats. Let's see what we can find. I literally have no idea where anything is, um, but I was told just to wander around and you're gonna find some stuff to eat. And I do see people walking with food in their hands, and they came from this way. Starting to see some stuff here. Look at this kimbap and noodles for three fifty. This is definitely one of those cheap, fast, local food places. And the menu, everything is under five U.S. dollars. I have no idea what the menu entails, but a lot of other people are getting what looks like really good dishes, like meat over rice. I'm just gonna stick with the ramen and kimbap. Look at this, this is a lot of kimbap. Kimbap is good. Just a simple bowl of uh, instant noodles with chilies and egg. For some reason, it tastes fantastic. Little kimchi, little noodles. And dip the kimbap into the broth. Very simple and expensive, hearty and delicious. I get you could just make your own instant noodles, but you got homemade kimbap some good banchan. Get out a little bit from all the studying. Pretty cheap and delicious meal. And that noodle still retains a lot of chew, even though it's been sitting on bowl for a while, especially on a cold day like this. Oh, this is so good. After that, you can open up your jacket a little bit. See everybody walking around with one of these. It's like a waffle sandwich. I'll do dessert now. Oh, can see that? Ooh. Looks good. I think little blocks of cheese. I have no idea what I got. This is just one of their top sellers. The waffle is really toasty and nice. Nutella inside. It looks like some condensed milk. Ooh, look at that. This is what a waffle monster will look like. Mmm. Oh, I freaking love this. No wonder. Everywhere I looked, people were just walking around with this thing. Oh my god. So the little cubes of stuff I thought was cheese is some sort of frozen condensed milk thing. Oh my god. There's ice cream in here. Oh my. I thought this was like, you know, it just tastes like a waffle with Nutella inside. Like, who hasn't had that? But this one, oh my. The waffle is the toastiest, crispiest waffle I've ever gotten from one of these like waffle places. So you take a bite of toasty, crispy waffle and you get a mouthful of ice cream, chocolate, and that cube condensed milk, cheesy stuff. I still don't know exactly what it is. It tastes like a cross between like a ice cream and a, and a cream cheese. I kid you not. This is a must have. Oh yeah, come here and get this travel here and get this. I would. This is one of those food items I'm going to be missing and thinking about when I go home tonight. I'm literally in a state of my mind being blown right now because I just did not expect this to be that good. <laughs> kind of nice. Lunchtime, not a lot of people here. This area is where all the students come. It's like a whole block of food vendors. And this one is in particular pretty popular. It's pancake and a hot dog. This is my ham cheese powder pancake hot dog. What's crazy about this is the outside of the pancake is really crispy. Inside, soft and airy. This thing is able to hold its shape because it's molded, almost like when you would fold a fortune cookie or something. This is one of the most interesting pancake hot dog things I've ever seen. Oh, and by the way, you guys missed this. I dropped it and I caught it. I'm a food ninja. It is what it is. Like, I will do anything to save my food. This is worth a try here. This is so interesting. 
The outside has got a thin, crispy shell. Inside, it just tastes like a regular pancake, a little sweet, a little doughy. Besides the mustard and the ketchup, it's crunchy coleslaw over a cooked hot dog. This is actually pretty tasty. I think the most unique thing about this is the outside pancake shell. I mean, the way he made it, it must be something with the batter, where you got that nice little crunch outside, but still able to maintain that pancake consistency inside. Two bucks, I like this. So I got this dish right here for 3,000 won. So what went into it, some fatty pork belly, whole slice of Spam, bunch of different sauces, and this glorious egg. And all that is sitting on top of steamed white rice. That is so incredibly tasty for $3. How did I not know about this part of so before? I mean, I've been here before, but only to the uh, to the fish, fish yard. But this, this is where the treasure's at. The pork belly's great. It brings a little fat, which is always welcome when you have rice. There's a bit of heat in here to kind of balance out the fat. Of course, you got the creaminess from the eggs. And I didn't even invite the big chunk of Spam to the party yet. And what you do is you're supposed to actually mix it all together, which I didn't do. I'm watching the people besides me. I'm learning. There's a little bit of kimchi in here as well. And you got to just mix it all up. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is three bucks. This is so worth it. Make sure that creamy egg yolk just goes everywhere. This is just so amazingly delightful. Mm. Oh, the love. Every single bite. Creaminess from the egg. Tons of meat in here. Rice is cooked perfectly. You get a little spice, you get a little fat, a little crunch from the kimchi. This, for $3, you're getting a ton of flavor for the buck. It's like you went to an art sale and paid 50 cents for a masterpiece painting. Basically, an amazing food bargain. This is fast becoming one of my favorite food areas in Seoul. I mean, you could legit come here with $5 and feel very full and very satisfied. Probably the most common food stalls you'll find in Seoul. It's ones with the fish cake. You can find these stalls all over the city. They're really great for a cheap snack. Spicy rice cakes in this case. Only $2 per plate. Oh, fish cakes, 50 cents. I like dipping my fish cake in the chili sauce. You'll rarely find a place that don't do these well. And don't forget to get yourself some fish cake soup ah, to finish everything off. That was fun exploring the orange and probably the cheapest, most tasty food combo I've had in Seoul. Back here in Hyundai, this is one of my favorite neighborhoods in Seoul. It's definitely the most happening neighborhood, like tons of little shops and little food stands and restaurants. And it's just really fun to walk around and explore. Check this place out. This is a really good little place that sells jianbing. This is the most popular street food in China. Hmm, they cook it pretty well. Crepe is nice and eggy. The little crunchy cracker in here, which is like the essence of a jam bean, that's really nice and crunchy. A lot of times, the cracker in here, that is soggy. A soggy cracker inside a jam bean is an insult to the jam bean. This is pretty good. The spicy sauce is nice, good amount of heat. I actually have a really good recipe for this thing. This crepe is actually a lot lighter than, than some of those I'm used to, so you don't really feel like this thing really weighing you down after you eat one. It's pretty good. Not the cheapest thing because we're in this area, but if you want a really delicious, pretty authentic tasting jam bean, there you go. This neighborhood is really fun just to walk around and good lord. 
What the heck? That's a mountain of meat. Tower bulgogi stew. I think we gotta give this a try. I know nothing about this restaurant, but heck of an advertisement out there. <laughs> mountain bulgogi. And they told me when I came in, they said it's, it's for two. I can handle it. There's literally like three people working on my meat mountain right now. Oof. Oh, wow. I'm hoping inside the meat mountain, it's all meat and not like a chocolate Santa where it's all hollow inside. Down below, some greens, some sprouts, some kind of sauce down there, I don't, I don't know yet. This is two persons worth of bulgogi. If there was an actual mountain that existed somewhere in the world, I would like to go and eat my way down. I have noticed that this, this meat mountain has been shrinking. So whatever's on the inside of this, it's melting. This might take a while. This mountain is definitely leaning a lot, so I don't know if there's gonna be like a, a meat avalanche soon or what's gonna happen here. Ah, oh, looks like the meat is covering a tower of sprouts. So it's definitely not a full on meat mountain. All right, so mountain was more like a beef hill, but there's still a ton of stuff. Ooh, this stew is deep. The mountain may not be that high, but look how deep this thing is. Oh my God, that is a lot of freaking sprouts. Good Lord. Flavor is not bad. Broth is a little sweet. The beef is not the tenderest, but it's got a ton of flavor. This, whatever this thing is soaked in, is a really good broth. Let me give you a, a trio of dipping sauce. I don't know if I want to add any more mayo to that, but a little wasabi, a little chili sauce. I know I might have been disappointed that an entire mountain of beef wasn't actually an entire mountain of beef. But the flavor is great. Maybe a little sprout heavy. I mean, luckily I like sprouts, but still, even then, that's way too much sprouts. I kind of get it. I guess if you use the sprouts like as a, as a form of carbs, like you treat it as noodles and you're eating the beef with like, I don't know, sprout noodles. So I guess that works. The sprouts is definitely where all the flavor is though. I mean, this thing definitely does not lack beef. It has a good portion of beef. It just, you know, a little misleading with that mountain out there. And this is for sure, easily portion for two people. All right, I'll take care of all the meat, most of the sprouts, a little more to go. Not a bad dish. They're really nice here, keep giving me free food. One thing that I love in Korea, and you can find a lot of these places around the Hyundai area, is places that do grilled intestines, like organs, kidneys, hearts, which is one of my favorite things to eat. And he's giving me a little taste of what he's cooked. It's pretty good. Like in this country, we're coming to South Korea. We're gonna try some iconic foods, either cow innards or pig innards. Huge part of this culture. And it's delicious. This definitely, I wouldn't consider it as the cheap food portion of this video, but it is a lot of food. I'm thinking, I might even feed three people if you get some rice with it. I thought it was 15,000 won, but it was 15,000 won per person. And it was a two person meal, so that was a 30,000 won dish. <laughs> I don't think that was worth 30,000 won. I mean, it was a good dish, it was flavorful, but Man, that was way too pricey for that. And the Asian in me is screaming after that meal. Oh, 30, th I mean, if that entire mountain was actually made of meat, then yeah, it'd be okay. But you're basically paying a lot of money for sprouts. A lot of sprouts. Ah, this is the place I'm looking for. Not a food place, a passport place, a photo studio. Need, a, need some passport photos for me to get into Cambodia. Holy crap. 
Oh my god. This photo studio K popterized my passport photo. Is that a word? K popized? K popperized? Koreanized? Look at this. Did I just use some like advanced Korean filter app for my photo? I mean, I look great. I look like I should be dating someone from twice, but. <laughs> it's not like I walked in there and I was like, hey, I want to take some photos and make them look beautiful. It was passport photos. I got the pass. This is a passport photo. There was no miscommunication. This is. I mean, I look great. This, this is beautiful. I seriously look like I should be a part of a boy band right here, but hopefully I can get past the uh, customs with this. All right, uh, there's one more thing I want to eat, but not till way later. I'm uh, pretty good right now. So we're going to go back, rest a little bit, then we'll go to dinner number two. This is crazy. I get home. Dear Chen Mai, I want you to stay comfortable, sleep well, room, room keeping team. And they gave me fluffy socks. I love this hotel. I, 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 I never want to check out, ever. I just want to stay here forever. Seoul's definitely a night city, so you're gonna find places, food places open till one, two, three o'clock in the morning because people drink, and after they drink, they want to eat. That looks really good, by the way. Marble green tea. Ooh. Oh, well, they're closed. So right now I'm looking for something that's hearty, preferably spicy and soupy. I know just the thing. Ah. And this is exactly what I'm looking for. Go Army Stew. And there's really nothing heartier or more comforting, more perfect on a cold night than Army Stew. Also, this is one of the most affordable food items in South Korea. Army stew is one of my favorite Korean comfort foods. Uh, if you guys never had this before, this was created after the Korean War when food was scarce, so a lot of the ingredients came from army bases. That's why you got tons of spam in here and hot dogs, and that was mixed in with, with anything that people had available, so ramen, sprouts, and it just put it all together and stewed it in a spicy broth. This is just the most perfect thing on a cold day. Usually you can get something massive like this for one person for about seven, eight, maybe $10. I mean, this is Hyundai area, so it's gonna be a little more expensive, but this is not an expensive food item, even though it, it looks ginormous. Inside the stew, little octopus, tons of ramen, tofu, spam, Hot dogs, rice cakes, sprouts, kimchi. Everything that will fill you up and warm you up is in here. Oh, I've been looking forward to this all day. First bite of army stew, whatever I'm in Seoul. It makes me so happy. I love so much. This dish. And what's also so good about this dish is that we've all cooked army stew at some point in our lives, whether we're in school or whatever, we're broke, and the only thing we had access to was instant noodles and bits of hot dogs. Then you just boil everything together, you toss in whatever you had in the cupboards, toss in some hot sauce, and this is what you get. This is basically something that you cooked up in your dorm room or your first apartment that you couldn't quite afford. I mean, I remember having two rice cookers when I was in college. One of them, every Friday night, that would be like the gourmet night for me. It would go instant noodles, little bits of hot dogs, some scallions, whatever heck else that was almost expired that I, I could get for cheap at the local Kroger. Second rice cooker would just have rice. And I would just put this on top of my rice and that would be like the best meal I had that week. So eating this, not only because it's so good, it's a comfort food I feel like most of us can relate to and most of us can take a bite of this and be like, oh yeah, I remember those days. I mean, typically we wouldn't be able to afford that little octopus or be able to find that anywhere in this great state of Missouri. But everything else, the spam, the little hot dogs, definitely.
I can already feel the sodium attacking my hands. This is a good conclusion to any food day. Any food day. And then with this, you're gonna be really happy and you're gonna sleep really well. Now let's see if we can go round up some bubble tea. This is a weekday night, but on the weekends, these streets will be absolutely packed. If you wanna have as pretty of a passport photo as I got, um, it's this company right here. These guys. I think I think that's the, the that's the name. Your picture will look so K poppy. You might be able to score a recording deal on that picture alone. So many of these like tiger sugar knockoffs all around the world now. Still good though. Today was really fun. Got to explore North Yangjin, an area that I haven't really been too much, but oh my god, that waffle. Seriously. Go down there, get the waffle, get that pancake hot dog. Seriously, if you're traveling here on a budget, that's where you should eat. All right, that's it for me. Going back to the hotel. Gonna hit the gym, cause uh, come on, you can't you can't just eat an entire army stew at midnight and not have consequences. And this brown sugar milk tea probably doesn't help things. As always, all the places I went to listed down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.